Hi everyone, welcome back to a wonderful episode of Painting at Home. I am Jean Moss. Today's a wonderfully exciting day uh, here at my studio. I have a rat infestation. Those little rascals just running around looking for, I don't know, maybe my collection of cashews. Who knows what they're after. Today's a very wonderfully exciting day also in the painting world because we are going to explore iced cap mountaintops. So exciting. I love the mountains. Now, I've never actually seen the mountains, but I did see the movie Brokeback Mountain starring Jamie Lee Curtis and George Clooney, and it was just thrilling and majestic. And I thought, I'm going to capture those mountains. So let's give it a try, shall we? I've got my trusty watercolors. I've got my various materials of Crayola crayons, markers, and we are ready to paint. Let's get started here. So, I thought the first thing we're going to do today is attack that sky. We usually take the sky last, but gosh darn it, we're going to mix things up a little bit today for our mountainscape, our snow-capped or ice-capped mountains. So I've got my bigger brush here, and what we're going to do is we're going to just capture first a little bit of white. So we're using watercolor because watercolor has become one of my absolute favorite materials. And we're going to use mostly white for this skyscape that we're going to do. And then we'll draw our mountain sort of in the background. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and oh, maybe a little bit of purple and a little bit of blue. And I've got my saturated brush and we're just going to start with a broad stroke at the top. As you know, a broad stroke is just a little bit wider of a stroke. You can do a broader stroke, right? Or little staccato strokes. So let's go ahead and capture a little bit more of that sky. I've got my big old brush here, I've got a little bit of white and some blue, and gosh darn it, why not a little bit of this sort of lavender, sort of violet purple. And I'm just going to start to sweep across the sky. Yeah, a little bit more of that purple, and I'm loving it so much I even might add in a little bit darker purple. Oh, that's just wonderful. What I love about watercolor so much is the subtlety of it. The subtlety is just divine. So I'm drawing this sort of lovely kind of lighter purple, a little bit of bluish sky, and a little bit of white because we want to keep it very subtle. I hope everyone's having a wonderful week. It has just been a very sort of windy day here around the studio, which may be why it has attracted all those wonderful mice into my apartment into my studio. Here we go. So we're just going to keep sweeping right here. And again, I'm starting with the sky today because I'm going to draw the mountains up into the sky. So I want to just capture it first. And this is creating just a wonderful sort of a light bluish violet color and it's really exquisite. So I'm going to let that dry for a moment and we're going to go on a little bit to some of our groundscapes. So because it's a I want to capture the difference between higher elevation, which tends to be colder, and lower elevations, which tend to be a little bit warmer. So I am inspired so much by the springtime, and I'm going to start with my lower elevations using a little bit of green, because we want to make sure we have that grass. So I've wet my smaller brush, and we're going to do green and a little bit of that brown. Just green and a little brown. And oh, let's start. Oh, my hand wants to go here today. We're going to start right there. I'm just going to draw a little bit of this terrain with this wonderful, majestic sort of green. Now I'm just doing a nice, wonderful line. And I'm going to just mix this up by drawing in a little bit of grass. So now this is that staccato stroke we were talking about. Here we go. And of course, my mountains will go somewhere in the back. So we've got one side there. And then we're going to draw the other side because I just want to sort of map out where things are going to go. It's always nice, if you can, have a little bit of a plan. If you don't, though, that's fine, too. You can just kind of make it up. I might start with that staccato stroke over here. We were playing the other day with our gardenscape, with our little garden party. We were playing with textures. So what we're doing today is we're capturing elevation. So now I'm going to just fill this in with that little staccato stroke using my smaller brush. Now what's so wonderful about the smaller brush is it is creating a little bit of that hillside texture. So you can almost make out just a little bit of grass, which is just so fortunate. And when we look at it up close at the end, you'll be able to see that, which is just terrific. So let's go ahead and grab a little hillside. So we're doing hillside along with mountainside today. And I've got a little extra brown to create just a little bit of shading. And it's working out just better than I could have ever even imagined. 
look at that. Now I'm gonna fill in the other side because we're on such a roll here. I'm just gonna wet my brush a little bit, a little bit more, and let's grab a little bit more of that green, a little bit more of that brown, and oh, we're just creating a lot of fun right here on the page. Just a ton of fun, look at that. I'm hardly even, it just happens. It happens on its very own, and that is what is so magical and wonderful about painting at home. Anything can happen here. This is just terrific. So I'm creating a little bit of that grass. And as this is drying, I'm starting to map out how my mountainscape's gonna look. Oh, I have no idea. I have no idea, but I cannot wait to find out. But I have a little bit of a plan, a little bit. We're gonna play around even more with some textures. And I'm gonna start just finishing off this grass, and then we're gonna jump right in. Look at how that's working out so nicely. And who knows, maybe I'll add a little plant or two to that, we'll see, we'll find out. So let's go ahead and finish off our little side, side groundscape here, little hills, and we'll just kind of finish that out. And then in the background, we're gonna explore beautiful mountains. We are coming up on the weekend. I hope you all have terrific plans, maybe to get outside, see what kinds of parks or gardens or hills or whatever you can find. Maybe around your neighborhood, I don't know. Maybe you live in the desert. How about that? All right, we're capturing a little bit more of that green and that brown, and we're just finishing off just our little sort of front area. Look at how well that turned out. And then while this dries, we'll go back to our top. And I'm really excited because we're going to be starting our mountains at the very top. So I've got my skinny brush, and I've rinsed it, and then I'm also just dabbing it a little bit, just a little bit, so that it's saturated without being too drippy today. Oh boy, I am feeling frisky and I think I'm just gonna start right with black because what's going to happen is we're gonna get a little bit of darkness at the top and then we'll fill in with that white. I'm very excited about it because we want to capture the snow caps. So we're gonna start right at the top here and I'm just gonna go, oh, maybe up here, we're just gonna start boop, 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 boop. And create little edges here. Here's my mountain. I hope some of you have maybe seen a mountain in your lifetime. Please write in and tell me what it was like because I have only seen photos, pictures, and of course the movie Brokeback Mountain, which was a very wonderful film about a ghost. Here we go. We're just finishing up here. And now what I'm doing is I'm gonna just go all the way down. There's one mountain there, and then I might draw a couple in the background this is just the beginning. So I've drawn it up into our sky. So we're gonna let that kind of sit and dry for a moment. And I'm using for the moment exclusively watercolors. You can play with markers, you can play with crayon, you can find a piece of celery and dip it in a little whipped cream and draw mountain too. It's up to you, whatever you think. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that black because it worked out so beautifully. I'm coming back to my glue and I'm gonna draw another little one right up here. Here's another mountain in the back. Now this has a little bit more blue to it, which is fine by me, because I always say, let whatever's gonna happen just happen on the page. But I will fill in with a little bit of black, and we've got a little bit of mountain here, and oh, maybe another little ledge right there. And let's just kind of finish that guy off right now on the bottom. You can finish your mountains off however you want to. Broad strokes, small strokes, as long as you're stroking your mountains, you should be fine. Here we go, so we're just drawing that up, and then, oh, maybe a little baby guy back there. That little rascal in the background. And I might use a little more black in the background for him because we want to capture a little bit of distance. So, well, let's go ahead and get that black, and oh, and we're just filling in. Oh, yes, and that's just going to run right off the page. And there's our outline for our mountains. It's coming together absolutely beautifully better than I ever could have imagined. And I'm gonna go ahead and retire my small brush for the moment. We're gonna play around with this big guy here. So I'm gonna wet this brush a little bit, just saturate it, and let's explore with a little bit of color. I'm dabbing as well, because once again, we don't want it to be too much, because with this one, I don't want as much run down. I'm just gonna let that kind of sit and relax for a minute. And I wonder so much about this difference in texture because it's creating just wonderful movement on the page. But you can do whatever textures you want to. You can use your fingers if you want to. It's completely up to you. So what are we gonna play with today? How about a little bit of purple? I have this wonderful little bronzer. These iridescent paints we've been using this week have really just added a whole new level to my paintings and I'm just thrilled about it. 
hope you can find different materials in your house. Whatever you have, here we go. So we're going to start to create just a little bit of strokes. Now again, I don't want it to be super saturated, but I'm using the longer side, and I'm going to just start to stroke that very nicely. And this has a little bit more purple to it. Great, and we're going to come right into that grass. I'm just going to fill those out. There we go. And I'm doing a mixture of a stroke and then also a dab. Dab and a stroke. You'll appreciate a little difference. Now what I'm going to do is grab a little bit of that black. I'm keeping my brush just as saturated as it is, and I'm just going to grab it. I'm just going to pull it right down. Pull it right down. You can pull whatever you want, and I've got a little bit of that purple, and a little bit of that black, and then I'm just pulling the blue. And what that's doing is it's pulling the shade down. It's pulling the shade down. And we're going to just make that right there. And you know what I might do because I'm feeling extra frisky today? I'm going to grab a little extra black. Oh, these mountains are indeed moody. I'm just going to create a little zigzag here. Almost looks like a stair shape. There we go. And that gives it a little bit more texture in that particular mountain. I'm going to go back to that black and gosh darn it, I'm going to do the same thing right over here because we are living absolutely on the edge today. Maybe on the edge of a cliff. Who knows? And I haven't wetted my brush too much because, again, we want the texture to do the work today instead of the water. So we're really kind of living large here. And I'm just creating a little bit more of these wonderful textures just using the horizontal side. And it's looking a little bit like rock. And it's just magical. Let's grab that again. So I've got this terrific blonde, sort of iridescent color that's almost bronzish. And then I'm going to find my purple again, a little bit darker purple. And darn it, we're going to go back to that black. And let's make this one maybe a little bit darker here. And that's exactly how I wanted it to look. Look at that. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of white because the white is going to make it look a little bit like that snowfall. So I've got that white right in the middle, and incidentally, that's where my tape is on my canvas. This is wonderful. Now I don't want to lose that line there, so I'm going to grab a little bit more blue and a little bit more black, and we're just going to make sure we don't lose that black. That's it. But now I'm going to shade it in a little. That's really just capturing a lovely sort of distinction between our mountains. Oh, yes. Blend that all together. Oh, this is just so moody and terrific. I love it. I love mood. I love how terrific that is. I'm just going to keep going with that stroke. I remember the time I did see Brokeback Mountain. I was sitting with my pet cat who was no longer with me. Her name was Rudy, and she was not as big a fan of the mountains as I was. She just kept meowing and looking at me. And I said, oh, Rudy, you may never know. You may never know. And then eight months later, she ate a little piece of chocolate, and it didn't agree with her. And that's when we had to part ways. Because chocolate is one of my favorite things to eat. Now, one thing I might try to do with this is grab a little bit of my glitter purple. Because if you've ever seen the movies or a photo, the mountains really do kind of glisten. It's just magical, and I'm going to grab a little bit more of that black because in the back, we want this to be a little bit darker. Now, we do have a little excess water. Let's just give that a little dab because I want the paint to be the star here. So I'm going to grab a little more of that purple. Oh, I love this piece. And we're going to just grab a little bit more. Here's our mountains. Oh, let's make sure that doesn't right there. I'm just going to do a light dab, and there's our mountains. Oh, that's just terrific. Just terrific. Grab a little bit of this and go across just to create a little bit of movement in our mountains. Look at how glorious that is turning out. So I'm going to let that kind of chill out and I'm going to go back to filling in my sky. So I'm going to really wash this brush because one thing we're achieving is terrific juxtaposition, which just means difference in colors. Imagine that. So I'm going to dab this brush very well, very well indeed. Now we're going to go back to that wonderful lighter color. I've got a little blue. I've got a little bit of white, and let's grab a little bit of that purple. Jump back in, that blue. I'm just going to fill and going back to that broad stroke. And look at how wonderful that's turning out. And that's just going to run right into the mountains. Similar to those wonderful trees that we love to draw, these mountains are just going to simply penetrate the sky. And I'm going to let those mountains and that sky just kind of blend into each other. There we go. This is just terrific. Oh yes. Look at how that turned out. Look at how that turned out. 
Let's just let that live. And of course, we're gonna give that a moment just to simply dry. Let's go ahead and just blend this bad boy right here. Oh yes, and then come back to some of that texture. That texture that's filling up just beautifully. There we go. Oh boy. Now the next thing we're gonna do is explore our clouds. You know, everyone who's watched any episode of Painting at Home, you know that I just adore clouds, but also trees. And today, we're gonna to use both. I'm gonna let my mountains just kind of dry for a moment, and then we'll explore the little snow caps. I'm very excited about that. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this iridescent color, along with my white. Iridescent, along with my white. If you can see these iridescent colors, Right, this one has a very special kind of moody gray, and it also has been blending very nicely with the glitter. So gold darn it, let's go ahead and include a little bit of glitter and some purple and a little bit of white. And we're just going to start to do that texture again. Here's one big old puffy cloud. And this one I'm going to make it just a little bit more smudged. Smudged just means, oh, well, kind of messy. There's one big old cloud there. Let that fill in. Wonderful. Grab a little bit more of that water. There we go. And we're going to find a little bit of that purple, a little bit of that white. And of course, we have our marvelous glitter and that iridescent. And let's create a cloud maybe over here. Yes. Oh, it's smudging, smudging, smudging. Maybe this one goes a little off the page. Skull. Just kind of diving in from the top. And you want to use both sides of your brush there. There's another little cloud. Maybe that one's a little, a little wispier. Got a little movement there. Saturate that brush. And I'm just going to tap. Wipe my brush. Getting that iridescent color. cloud of friends over here. There's one cloud friend. There's another cloud friend. Yes. And then maybe they meet in the cloud middle. Tap my brush. Hear that? And let's grab that iridescent color. going to explore birds. Why not? And I'm going to use, I have this terrific dark purple. Dark purple with a little bit of glitter and then I'm going to catch that black again. And let's just find some birds right in the background here. There's one. Oh, oh yes. And there's another one. Oh. I always like my birds to fly together. Why not? Maybe one in the background there. Beautiful. And then maybe a few over here on either side of that cloud, sort of exploding out of the cloud. That's beautiful. It's coming together very nicely. Now, my fountains seem to have dried just a little bit. And as you all know, we want to capture the snow caps of the mountains. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush very thoroughly. And then tap. And I have a little bit of sponge, a little bit of a wipe, because we want to keep that saturation, but we don't want to make it so wet. You never want to be too wet, right? Just saturated, not completely wet. If you get a little wet, that's okay too. Here we go. So I'm saturating my brush, just absolutely diving in and filling completely out with this white because we're going to start to add in some of that snow cap up at the top here. Here's a little bit of snow cap. Let's see if we can catch a little bit more white. Maybe it's just a light snow. Who knows? Getting a lot of white in here. Really using my wrist here just to capture as much white as possible. And then, oh, maybe some snow caps right up here. There we go. It's a very light snow because that purple is just so present, which is absolutely fine by me. Fine indeed by me. Here we go, grabbing a little bit more of that white. 
wonderful. And let's maybe add a little snow right here. Just a light snow. Maybe it's spring, the snow is just melting. And then let's grab a little more of that white. Wonderful. Now this is a pretty saturated part of the mountain. So we're gonna just let that kind of go up all the way here. And what's really wonderful is you can actually see a little bit of snow cap at the top by just bringing it up a little bit, right? So we're gonna bring that mountain up a little bit and it's creating a little bit of that snow cap. And then I've also left a little bit of space, which is just wonderful. This is coming together so beautifully, friends. The last thing I want to do, of course, because we all know again how much I love life in my paintings. So I'm gonna take, keep with this brush here, and I'm gonna draw a nice tree just to finish everything out. So I'm gonna use a little bit of black, and then maybe a little bit of that iridescent, and then let's grab a little brown. What the hay? And I think Mr. Tree just lives right over here. So we're gonna start at the bottom, and I'm just gonna draw it right up, right there. Saturate that brush again, not too wet. You never wanna be too wet a little bit moist. And let's grab that brown, that black, and we're just going to draw a big, girthy tree trunk. Big and girthy. That's wonderful. We're going to play a little bit because one thing I really love are evergreens. I don't know if you've ever seen an evergreen, but if you've ever seen a Christmas tree, you probably know what they look like. I've not seen a Christmas tree live in person, but I have seen plenty of photographs on the Google. So we're gonna just draw that tree up nice and tall, nice and tall. Let it penetrate the sky. There's our tree. We're gonna create a little shadow. Nice, big, strong, girthy trunk. Oh, all the way up there, look at that. And now because I have been just so on textures of late, tap that brush, we're gonna stay. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna live a little bit on the edge again. Going back to our bigger brush, this big boy. We're gonna, it's already pretty saturated, and I have a little bit of water on my palette, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of this green, and you know what I'm gonna do? A little bit of brown, a little bit of black. We're just gonna play with some colors, and then I have this wonderful glitter color, and we're gonna play with some textures. So I'm gonna start using this very wonderful sort of horizontal phase of my brush, and we're just gonna draw down. Look at that, and it's creating a little bit of an evergreen. And to shade it in, something kind of fun, just use a little bit of black. Look at that. Isn't that just terrific? You just go sideways. It's creating a nice little evergreen. Mine's kind of going a little bit off the page. No worries for it to me at all because you can still see a little bit of that sky in the background. And we'll just make it a little bit bigger on the way out. Look at that. It's coming all the way down. I'm going to get a little more black just to fill in that shading. There we go. And what I love about the brush is it's creating that evergreen texture. Look at that. And there's our evergreen. And let's give it a nice solid tip up there. Boop, boop. There it is. Look at that evergreen. A little bit more of that black. And I'm just going to make sure that looks very nicely there. And I love that white that that's capturing. One final thing, because I always think that our trees, our big trunks, need to have some solid foundation. I always love a little bit of rock. So I'm going to grab my iridescent, my black again. I'm just going to draw a little bit of rock down here big bulky rock. And then there's our rock there. And then there's another one there. And a little shading. I might just sweep that all the way across. Look at that. Snowcat Mountains. So easy to do at home. Anyone can do it. Look at that. Well, this turned out better than I could have ever even imagined. I am delighted. It's almost as if I've been to the mountains. Almost as if. Let's zoom in and take a look at our painting for today. Fascinating. We live in a world where mountains exist, 
It truly is a wonder of the world. See if you can find some mountains, maybe out your back door today. Maybe somewhere on Google or in a book or movie. Definitely look outside and just imagine the possibilities in these mountains. So much life, so much rock. I hope you all have a magnificent Thursday. Please join me back here again tomorrow, 5 p.m. for Painting at Home. I am Jean Moss. Have a wonderful Thursday.